Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much to everyone here for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to maybe present to you today. Um, I don't envy your task getting into the energy and climate debate for three or four days and have to make societal recommendations. That's, that's quite challenging, and for all of us here, even Marie, after a, a long career in it, um, you know, has, has, has choices to make in terms of uh, what can be recommended. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, in, in a very short space of time, 10 minutes is hard to, to talk about the energy transition and what we've achieved in Tipperary and how. Um, and I think I'll try and maybe answer some of the questions that were brought up uh, as well. Um, so I'll, I'll just rattle through a few case studies. So Tipperary County Council, a public body, we've talked about public bodies leading by example. Um, they have, over the last decade, they've improved their energy performance by, I think, about 43%. They have removed most fossil fuels from their buildings, uh, so they run on renewables and waste heat. Um, they have about 85 separate projects that we had to write 85 business cases for the head of finance to, to spend money on 85 different projects. They save a lot of money, and they're ambitious to do a lot more. Um, all of those have, been, has, have, had, have happened to date with technology that is available, and as Brian has, has mentioned, it is available now for, for everyone. Um, but what it, one thing I think is quite interesting is that the councillors and the executive, um, the staff of the local authority, are very much engaged on the energy transition and see what needs to happen at a local level. And they started being very much internally focused on the energy costs of their pools and, and public buildings, <coughs> and now they're focused externally on bringing the rest of Tipperary with them. Um, and we have embarked on this uh, sustainable tip, this large investment program over the next three years, which has been funded by the European Investment Bank and the, the Irish uh, capital grants through the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. And it's quite a big step to take as a local authority to, to really help get out there and, and, and for the energy agency as well. And that's in homes and businesses and, and, and in their own buildings. They've also ran a, a, an event for 2,500 farmers recognising that Agriculture has been talked about as being um, the problem in, in terms of climate change, but we feel it's the solution in terms of climate change because that's where our wind and solar energy generation is going to come from. That's where our biomass resources is going to come from. And we had a huge event that was very much engaged, and a lot of the farmers want to try and really, really help Ireland become a leader in, in terms of climate change. So uh, I, this is my one slide on buildings. It's a big chunk of what we, what we do. We embarked on this program, which we've called Super Homes. It was originally titled the Near Zero Energy Building Retrofit, but our marketing and communications person decided that that wasn't a very good idea. Um, but really, it came from being very frustrated about putting in oil boilers. And we, we've heard earlier on from Marie about the different scales and ABC and A++++. And we wanted to put A++ heating systems in homes. So we had to figure out, well, what do we do in those homes? And we did, and we piloted in a, in a number of homes. But now we have a service for citizens. So people come to us and say, I'd like to do that in my house. It's not free. It costs a lot of money. Um, 30 to 40,000 was about right from Brian. The state have a, a pilot um, deep retrofit program that we can use money, and you get between 30 and 50% of the cost of it. So it makes sense for homeowners to do. Um, and what we do is we go into the home, we identify what needs to happen, we design it, we use engineers, we support the homeowner understanding the changes, we use heat pumps, we use solar panels, um, we do all the things that make sense for that homeowner in their home because there are different choices. And roughly we see about 60 to 70% cut, cut in carbon and energy bills. But more importantly, because it's a heat pump going into the home, as the grid further decarbonizes, that home becomes 2050 ready when we leave. Um, so we have about 70 homes to date. We, we cover all parts of society, and we have one that focuses on health. And when you see people email you a week later and say, my daughter doesn't need her asthma inhaler anymore because her home has lovely air quality, it really brings it home to us that this is the right thing to do from all the different things. We still lack a financial solution. We don't have a 300 euros a month solution for it, but that's what, where we'll get to. Um, and most of the homes get to an A rated. Um, and that is the utopia, I think. Um, one other thing, just to mention on it, um, we're, we're embarked on a research project to bring demand-side management so that the heat pumps will run a little bit more at night or a little bit more when the wind blows. Um, I suppose another part of, of what we do, or not even what we do, but what, what the communities of Tipperary do, um, 
It started in a, in a parish hall about the hurling team losing three of their best players in, in, in 2010. And it has morphed now into this community development exercise where 200 or 300 homes a year are undergoing retrofit. They're employing local people. They're spending a, um, about three million a year on, on shallow retrofit. It's again a supported project from the National Energy Agency. But what I think is really important about this, one of the, one of the individuals who was involved in this stood up at a, at, a, at a conference that we had about what do we need to do, and he said, when people put their hand up and say, I want to do something, the state and the agencies, including us, should support them in achieving their goals. And that's very much what the Energy Agency does. Um, another community group that stood up and said in 2001, we want to build a wind farm because we have an upland area, not very good land. Uh, wind is, is one of the resources, and they looked at wind, wood, uh, hydro, anaerobic digestion. They started that process. It was a very long process. It was a very hard process. They had every barrier put in front of them. Um, they had the, the large developers come in and dangle money and say, why don't you just uh, cash out here and, and so on. But the real leadership from a local level, um, they, you know, they developed this. And the little graph there shows roughly per megawatt per annum over the life of a project what happens locally if you do it if it's locally owned. And you get three times the benefit at a local level. And that will go into a lot of different citizens. They'll have money to educate their children. They'll have all of those things. And they will achieve much more with that locally owned. And the lesson really is, when we embark on this new electricity support scheme that was mentioned earlier on, um, we need to learn that people need to be involved. And if they're not involved, they will not like it. And that's what we've seen. And, and we continuously see that to this day. And there was a really good community wind farm that was going to be built in Waterford, but there was so much objection because people were so scared about the negative impacts that they, they decided against it. So what's different in Tipperary? And I'm not going to read the, read the slide out. There are people who want to achieve this difference. We've set a goal of removing fossil fuels from every one of our projects. And once you set that task, the engineers can deliver it. And, and that's, that's really what we, what we want to, want to stress that it, it can be. So we need to set a task of society getting rid of fossil fuels. The Department of Education need to see a plan or need to produce a plan that says we'll have no more fuels in our schools in 10 years to lead the country and so on. Um, but also people need to be supported. This is hard and we need to figure out not just grants but how are we going to fund the people that will help people make this transition. And I really believe we need to activate the energy citizen. I think we need all of you to become the energy citizen in three days. It's a hard task. Good luck. Um, but we need, you know, we need to look at our taxation system and move it from labor to, to carbon a little bit. Um, we need to make sure that new build homes, 50% are going renewable. Why are we letting the other 50% put in oil and gas boilers? Um, we don't have enough policymakers. There's seven people in the department at principal officer level. There needs to be 30. You know, it took, took them seven years to put the renewable heat incentive together because it was one person's job part-time amongst a whole pile of other work. Um, we need more people in the department so that they can make the policies. People need the support as much as the grants. We need to allow people to sell the electricity from the roof, as was discussed earlier. Very important. We need community heating. We need community energy, not just community wind energy. Um, and right now, Ireland's citizens are being excluded from benefiting from the energy transition. Until people can save money and make money robustly from the energy transition, they will not engage. And I think that's why the, they don't lean on their TDs. And that's why their TDs don't make any decisions to, to push on the energy transition, because people don't see the benefit. And I think it's really important that we look at it from an individual and societal point of view to see this benefit. And we really need to get passionate and ambitious about the energy transition. Thank you very much.